G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy, and if you're new here, my name is Teg. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the uh, lands that I live and work on here in Perth in Western Australia, uh, the Wajik people of Noongar Buja. Now today, I'm very excited because I'm bringing to you an interview with a, uh, an experienced podiatrist to talk about how boots fit and what we need to know about our feet. Um, so I'm very uh, pleased to welcome Mr. Anthony Cox. Um, I'd like to introduce to you uh, Anthony Cox. Anthony, thank you for joining us. No worries. You're most welcome, Ted. Good. Um, now, you're a podiatrist. You reached out to me. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, yeah, Tech, I, I, um, I suppose I reached out to you um, after um, uh, being um, swept up in the uh, the boot uh, sort of um, craze, if you want to call it that, uh, in recent months. Um, I've been a podiatrist for over 25 years and um, practicing here in Australia and my um, primary work was actually with the Australian Department of Defence. So I've handled uh, quite a few boots um, over the years, um, mostly in the combat slash tactical sort of boot side of the house, um, but always been a boot lover myself, um, worn boots to work and always had a good pair of work boots and casual boots, etc. So yeah, that sort of sort of uh, piqued my interest earlier this year. And I don't have the collection that you have, but I have uh, have uh, plenty. Um, yeah, I enjoy um, uh, getting outdoors, taking hikes and things. And so it's always good to. I've got a couple of pair of Red Wings, um, um, Parkhurst, Grantstone, Thursdays. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, right now in my life, I'm not working as a podiatrist due to a sight problem. But uh, yeah, um, um, that's a bit bit of a bit of a summary there for you. Yeah, terrific. Um, it, the the YouTube uh, uh, rabbit warren thing is very real, isn't it? I think you get sucked in a lot and then you go to the next one and you go to the next one. <laughs> oh, totally. Yes. Yeah. And uh, that algorithm is quite powerful and you find yourself um, um, maybe sometimes it's very interesting, but maybe sometimes you want two hours of your life back. You know, <laughs> it's <laughs> easy to waste time. Yeah. 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 So um, run through some of the boots that you have. And, uh, uh, do you have any favourites? Um, well, I, I do like them all, uh, I have to say, but for various reasons, as you know, we, we, we tend to favour ones for different um, reasons. Um, and uh, we might come to that a bit later when we talk to the, the, the whole topic of maybe why we wear boots or why we wear footwear at, at all. But um, yeah, as I said, I like to, um, I like to uh, take walks with my little dog and things. So I, I find that the more um, ruggeder style more rugged style right. boots rather than the fashion style if you like um yeah um this morning i took a took a took a walk in my parkhursts in the uh rust waxy yeah and uh i love that 602 last like it's mm -hmm. just um it's very good um yeah, yeah. um we'll, uh, we'll, go into, so, we'll go into a bit of the last because I, i'd be very interested in your opinion on you know the different lasts and and whether yeah. they're good for you or not even yeah yeah sure sure yeah. i mm -hmm. think i think you know um there's a lot of um um time spent discussing fit and break in um that i've found and ultimately i think if you get a last that matches your foot the best um that that's really key really yeah. key yeah. yeah so um you know as you you're very aware i'm sure that there's um no foot's the same as you know your neighbors or your um cousins even you know um so it's yeah. about uh i know in australia we tend to have relatively wide forefeet you know on mass uh and then some people have very skinny feet and and i find that um there's also trends where people will say straight out i have high arches um and what i find is that it's not always the case i've seen true high arches and they are very high and very distinctive and very rare 
And I think it's the lack of a flat foot, then people automatically delve in to say, well, I have high arches when really they're more neutral. Right. Mm. Do you think mm. because we, we're outdoorsy in Australia, um, mm. you know, we wear thongs, mm. bare feet, do you th does that affect fit, do you think? Oh, yeah, for sure. I think, yeah. um, you know, as children grow, um, you know, and, and a lot of kids in Australia will run around in bare feet, um, being outdoorsy, as you said, you know, um, I don't know if you've had a really good look at a, a say, a, a person who surfs a lot. Yeah. You know, yeah, they have some yeah, of the most feet. Ama amazing feet, um, very muscular feet, you know, um, right. and by that I mean the muscles in the feet itself, yeah. Which, because they're stabilising on the board, I suppose. Correct, that's yeah. right, yeah. yeah. So the muscles in the feet control the toes and um, they develop them through through balance and grip and, you know, walking on sand a lot and, um, yeah, they, they, are, they can be quite distinctive, but I think you know, I have to say that nothing impacts your foot health more than footwear. Right. So, so right. you know, it's 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 um, certainly um, wearing bare feet or thongs and this sort of thing will have an have an effect. Um, yeah. yeah. You uh, when when you emailed me, which I, I found really interesting, you said mm. that um, uh, boot reviewers would sometimes mm. use biomechanical terms like incorrectly or loosely. Um, what are the sort of examples that you've seen of that? And, and what, what are the right biomechanical terms? Well, um, yeah, that's that's sort of one thing I'd observed. And I don't want this to be um, a criticism of, of some of the wonderful reviewers that are out there. Um, more of a me being a, a bit of a pedant, really, <laughs> because of my background. Um, but... Um, you know, I, I hear I hear anatomical terms and such as say instep, um, um, you know, uh, thrown around and arch support sort of broadly. Um, <clears throat> I think I saw somewhere the other day where there was a claim that having a too narrow a toe box could cause plantar fasciitis, and you know, this is professionally frustrating for me. You know, right. Um, so so that's sort of more what what sort of sprung me to 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 reach out and just have yeah. a chat like this make of yeah. it what you will like i said yeah. no criticism you know yeah, yeah. well yeah. The, the more we know of fact the better I, I mean i i found you earlier when you were talking about somebody identifying with high arches not mm. really having high arches i mean i i'm not even sure if i have flat feet i have very mm. low arches you know um, mm. and and my my feet is it called pronating when you turn in it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so it, it's it's difficult for a um, non-professional, you know. You, we all wear boots, and I have a feel for my boots, but I don't really know why certain boots feel certain ways, you know. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, to explain that a bit, I suppose I'll start by um, speaking about some of the facts. Uh, regarding um, how the foot functions, how it's built, why it's built the way it is, um, and how it how it works with things like pronation, etc. But essentially, you know, um, I I find that the foot is an engineering masterpiece. You know, it's um it's something that um I think if you handed some clever people these days the bottom end of a human leg and said, now you you design something that has to be an adapt an adaptive lever. Uh, sorry, an adaptive shock absorber, and then a f and then a rigid lever, all within 0.7 of a second. I think they'd struggle to do it, um, because that's the reality of what the foot does. Um, and so uh, the the best we can do, and it's very good, of course, the poor need um, prosthetic lower legs is is some sort of a um, a a spring uh, or a cam that that right. that they can sort of roll over rather than land quite firmly and then right. you know there's no function to pick up things and that sort of thing so it's very hard to replicate <clears throat> so i suppose what i might do is talk about some of, yeah as i said some of the facts you know sure. That, sure. that it is in, it is indeed that that um um adaptive shock absorber and then a rigid lever um, and so, firstly, we'll talk about a force line on the sole of a shoe. Now, this could be hard to imagine, but essentially, if 
in terms of the foot striking the ground, um, what would be a normal force line? So no foot's really normal because we're talking about human bodies here. Yeah. Um, but hang on, here we go. So if we were to talk about a force line, uh, this is a right boot. Right. You know, for a right foot. And where, if you like, should start here at the outside right. of the heel. Right. And the force line would go up the outside of the, sh the, the foot, across the ball of the foot, and then out through the big toe. Right. Okay, so, right. so yeah, as I said, striking here, up the outside of the foot, and then across the ball of the foot, and then out through the big toe. The big toe is the big toe for a reason. Um, it takes a lot of force, and the big toe joint, if you like, where it joins the first metatarsal, is a very important joint in terms of gait and stability and things like that. So, so that's that's a start. And that when it transitions, when the force transitions across across here, that's when the foot is rolling in or pronating, as you spoke about. Now, um, just because to look at standing up, say, in the shower, you have flat feet, it doesn't necessarily mean you pronate excessively. Um, pronation is a normal process. So we okay. have to pro. We, everybody has to pronate a little bit. Okay. Um, in it's one of the five major shock absorption methods that we have between our big toe and our hip. Okay. So, and also to stop pronation is virtually impossible unless you put the foot in a plastic cast. So, um, yeah, that that. Um, you can limit pronation, you can change the timing of pronation. And as I said, um, if you pronate for too long or for too hard or or at the wrong time in the gait cycle, then that is linked to certain problems. Yeah. But it, it's not all it's not all dark and bad, that's for sure. Yeah. So if I if I that that force line, yes. if I translate that into layman's terms and, and physics, because mm. not rather yes. biomechanics. So you 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 basically strike on the outside of the heel and yes. roll for stability to the ball and then push off with the toe. That's why the line goes that way, is it? That's right. right. Roll roll a little bit of roll for cushioning. Yeah. And then the, as the foot then rolls out ever so slightly, that's the stability to propel you forward. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, so, I hadn't thought of that before. I always thought yeah. your foot went clump, clump, clump. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's 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 and it's it's actually a, um, I suppose it's a twisting motion. It's not really a collapsing motion or a turning out motion. It's a combination of, we look at things in three planes, right. so three anatomical planes, and there's movement in each of those planes. So it's it's not as simple as one might think. Um, just on that note of the force line, while I remember, because it's normal to strike on this outer border of the shoe, this lateral border, that means that if you get excessive wear here, we I would consider that completely normal. Right. Yeah. So if I was to divide the heel of the shoe into quadrants, right. it would be that upper outer quadrant, right. which would be normal wear. Right. And that is actually because we don't all stand with our feet directly straight in front of us, if you like. I'll just see yep. if I, we all yep. turn out a bit. We're all yep. sort of five to one on the clock. Yep. So that means that we're always going to strike on that outside. Yeah, However, if if you have someone who is what we call an in-toed gait or pigeon-toed gait, they will actually wear on the inside. Right. Because they are striking on the inside. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's that's um uh, that's a query that I've I've had a lot over the years where people say oh, I must walk funny or I must roll too much or something. But it's completely normal to have that wear on that uh, uh, upper outer quadrant. Yeah. So, not wanting to go off track completely, what do you think about mm. these barefoot soles or barefoot shoes? Well, tech, um, that is a tin of worms that uh, I'm not sure we should open right now. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure how long we've got. Um, but I will say that I'm not totally against the barefoot shoes. I mean, Again, being the pedant, that is a contradiction in terms. But um, what I would say is that they will work for some people, 
um, and that's great. And um, um, that, but that doesn't mean that it is good for everybody. Um, right. um, the facts are that the sale of barefoot shoes or barefoot runners or minimalist runners are on the downtrend. If you do a search okay. on, right. it is on the downtrend. It has been for some okay. years. Um, I view it as a bit of a fad, um, if you like. Um, and the, the premise that a lot of the believers in these sort of footwear come from is that it's natural. Right. And to that, I might say, well, so is uranium and so is butter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so so um, that is quite different from walking around bare feet or walking around in, in loose thongs, though, I imagine. Is that right? Well, well, thongs are different again because you have to grip with your toe to keep the thong on your foot. Um, but that you, what you're doing is essentially just providing a very thin cover over the foot to offer a very small amount of protection and allowing the foot to function as if it were bare feet. Right. right. Yeah. And there's right. no <clears throat> there's no evidence out in the scientific literature to say that it will make you run faster or more efficiently or anything like that. Interesting. Um, yeah, but yeah. but but you know if if it works for someone, and I've had people um, who've come to me and said I've had problems with my shins or my knees or my ankles, and I changed to this style of running and this type of shoe, and I have no problems now. And I said, well, that's great. You know, I don't say you're doing it all wrong. You know, yeah, of um, yeah. Um, but often yeah, I think that's they, that's one of the things that you said at the beginning that everybody's foot is different, and and yes. it, it it worries me sometimes that. Um, people do message me and say, oh, do you think I should take a size this and that brand? I'm like, oh, yeah. look, all I can do is tell you what last fits me and what size fits me, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 So the fit the fit side of the house is 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 tricky for everybody um, because some will work better for some and not for yeah. others. Yeah. Mm. So um, just going back to the biomechanics in terms mm. of um, that force line. Mm. Uh, what about the top of the boot? Is, is there anything in mm. that that sort of uh, we should look for? Well, <clears throat> you, do you mean like in the top of the like the upper and the yeah, the vamp, yeah, the vamp yeah, and, like, and yeah. where the the yeah. um, the eyelets might be in and, and where the like support that. should be, where the eyelets might be, um, should they close tight or loose? You know that across what I call the instep. <laughs> yeah, no, well that is the instep. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it has to be, um, I suppose, um, what we call snug. You know, so you want you want something that's snug without being uh, too firm. Um, as a general rule, if I was giving advice to someone about, <clears throat> excuse me, footwear in general or, or boots, but we do like a small gap between the eyelets. Um, I know that there are some of the dressier boots which will come quite up close um, when you do up particularly those last two or three eyelets and um you know if that happens and it feels firm everywhere else it's a good fit nice and snug everywhere else well yeah that's fine but as a general principle um you know i was taught many years ago that say you're buying joggers that you would be looking for a 25 mil gap between the eyelets okay yeah. all right yeah. yeah as a as a general rule but then that can mm. become very hard if you have a very skinny foot or something like that so but but generally it's it's I suppose while we're talking about that, I'll just mention what makes I suppose a good shoe or boot from a biomechanical mm. standpoint, mm. and I'll do that. Um, Grandstone diesel. Yep. So, uh, but number one, we look for what we call a firm heel counter. So, obviously the counter we we're pretty on the same page there so that's really very quite firm if i squeeze it and if i push here then yep. i'm getting next to no movement you know it's very stiff uh, leather and there's that would be reinforced with with leather or some such i'm not particularly yep. okay with what's inside here so that that's very important and that the reason for that is because if you control the heel you can control the foot right yes that's so again part of yeah, exactly. Stability. So that rolling in or rolling out excessively will be limited. It won't be stopped. It will be limited by a firm heel counter. OK, yeah. so that's number one. Number two is what we call torsional stability. 
and I've heard you refer to this before. Mm -hmm. So that's where you have, you know, a, a, a stiffness in the in the the um, usually the midsole, and to a degree the um, the outsole where it's it's very stiff. So if you you grab your your boot and try and twist it, yeah, on itself, you, you'll get yeah. just a fraction of movement, um, and and so you you want a little bit of movement but not much, you know. Um, now the third thing is what we call a brake line. OK, yep. so that's when we when our foot breaks, it needs to line up where our shoe breaks. Right. Yeah. Or where the shoe needs to line up with our foot, you know. Yeah. So that means if you if you press on each end to break the shoe like that, yeah. it will break in the in line with that joint. Is that before or after you've broken the boot in? Like, is there a natural break line in a boot? No, that's a good point. Generally, there would be. Um, that would be formed after you've broken the, the, right. the boot in, in right. this sort of footwear. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and fourthly, the presence of a heel, I think, is important from a biomechanical standpoint. So, you know, you look at this, you know, the heel stack, as we call it, or and, you know, so the, there would be a, a, a drop of some, you know, um, 16, 14, 10, even as little as six or eight mils between the ball of the foot, the ball of the foot and the heel. Right. And that's important. Yeah, because uh, the analogy here, Tech, is that if you imagine a lady's foot in a high heel shoe, um, and you could even do this where you, you mimic having your foot in a high heel shoe with bare feet, what happens is you're, when you do that, you raise that heel off the ground, your arch comes up by itself. Yeah. OK, so the presence of a small heel will actually naturally raise your arch. Right. So there's no need to jam it up using a funky insole or any sort of ah. special padding or thing. So the presence of a heel will actually do that to a degree. Yeah. Sometimes when I was practicing, people would come along, and we'd do various tests and all we would do would put an extra small heel raise in their shoe. Oh yeah. And, yeah. and so, and, and that that works with a wedge sole, obviously, as long as there's a diff, there's a height difference. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And what yeah. about um, I I bought a a Nix boot recently, and um, mm, great. And it has quite a a, a built-in sort of leather slivers of leather built in under the arch, and mm. they told me that um, eventually, as my weight compresses them, mm. uh my foot actually slides further into what I thought was a long boot. Mm. Um, so what they're saying, I guess, is that um, your the arch support mm. gradually con conforms to the to your feet sliding in. Is that that mm. sort of matches well, what you're saying, isn't it? Yeah, um, I'm not sure that sort of all links up there, Tech. I don't think. Do you mean because of the heel? You asking because of the heel, your foot will slide a bit, or? Yeah, yeah, because it's a it, yeah. they use slightly higher heel than I'm used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, the heel should even if it is relatively high, what we see in the you know the loggers or the um that sort of style. Well, that that means the foot just assumes that position. It shouldn't be moving in the in the boot forward to back, or or in this case, sort of forward. It's it's more that um. The actual heel will wear down right. to a small degree, in which case the support from the shoe will will come up, if you like. It doesn't. Right. Well, it doesn't come up, but it's there, and because it's leather, it's molded and 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 fashioned more towards what is nice for you. Yeah. So, yeah. what are your, what are your thoughts on you know arch support, whether it be built in or orthotic or whatever? Well, um. Yeah, that's this is one of the terms that is you know um, thrown around a lot. I think that generally, um, number one, not everybody needs a lot of support. And in saying that, some people need a lot of arch support because it's a you know it's a human foot and the variables in and how the foot is built and the degree of flexibility and then what you're doing in the boot. You know, if you're loading a lot of heel to toe walking, then a lot of arch support, but um yeah i think what what i was trying to say before about the features of the shoe, good footwear then that the, you'll get a degree of arch support from a shoe alone a right. good shoe right. um whereas if you have a shoe that doesn't um meet those criteria then 
you're not going to get as much art support. So I suppose, you know, um, I'll just show you on another shoe. Um, this is a, just an old work boot of mine, but Love it. Mm. soft heel counter. Right. Really soft. Yeah. Very, very easy to twist on itself. Yeah. And pretty much breaks wherever I want it to break. Right. Okay? Right. Yeah. So, so for me personally, I, I wouldn't be walking miles in that. I have them, I right. wear them, but I wouldn't be long. I wouldn't go off on a big hike for that because right. I have quite flat feet and I'm also very flexible. So, so I, what well, I suppose to answer your question, then you're getting arch support from that torsional stability, the firm heel counter, and the right brake line, and a, and the presence of a small heel. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, having said that, as as podiatrists, you know, we intervene fairly regularly with things like insoles and orthotics and things like that, and and that 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 can vary. I think if someone's seeking out the services of a podiatrist, then you're getting a customization, whereas you or I could go to the pharmacy or the sports store and buy an off the shelf orthotic or insole. Um, it's interesting what gets called an orthotic these days because often it's soft and squishy and <laughs> you know, um, um, and and I think I think that's because a bit like shoemakers, I think if a medical company or a sports company decides to make, you know, the savior orthotic that will help you with everything, if they if they give a lot of arch support, then they're going to hurt some people. It's simple yeah. as that. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've bought some where, um, oh boy, it hurt. It's like something yeah, yeah. digging into the into the foot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you know, you, or d digging in too much, setting up new pains that you didn't ask for, and then oh. also um, uh, things like um, blisters, etc. Yeah. Right. Right. I. Just some experiences I've had with boots. Um, I I think like my Parkhurst, and we'll talk about last in a minute. My Parkhurst, mm. I feel very comfortable in, even though when you feel inside, mm. there's no particular build up in the arch, nothing like that. Mm. I put on mm. Aldens, and mm. again, you feel nothing in there, but they feel more supportive. I, I and I'm told mm. it's because of the experience they have of that sort of cantilevered part of the the, the sort mm. of leather sole. Uh, mm. And then I, I've worn Pacific Northwest boots where they do build up the arch with with slabs mm. of leather and it feels really mm. supportive. So three different styles of boot making mm. and all three make me feel very comfortable. What's wrong with me? Mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, you know, I'm not sure that there's anything necessarily wrong, but that that <laughs> de degree of arch support, you, you know, you can achieve in different ways. Um, you know, like I said, the features of the boot itself, and then in in particularly in the midsole or even the insole, um, if they can achieve where there is a, a even a small amount of extra, let's call it raise, you know, raise within that what would be the medial arch of the foot, if you they can achieve where you feel like you're standing on a tapered pipe, so f so the higher diameter on the inside of your foot, and the lower diameter on the outside, if you yeah, if you imagine that tapering down, and then you you that that will just mean your foot will function a lot better. Right. Yeah. Okay. Generally, if you have flexibility and flexible flat feet, yeah. Right. Generally, well, yeah. Let's talk about lasts. I mean, obviously, mm. there are on a one extreme the very fashionable skinny lasts, mm. right through to the round mm. Munson type last. Mm. Um, are there good ones in, in across that range, or are they all good if certain things are done? I think I think a last, you know, um, a lot of thought and um, preparation and design goes into a last because if you get it wrong, it's 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 you know huge problems if you want to sell lots of footwear. Um, and I think it, what in terms of last being better than you know, one or the other, is it's more towards whether your foot um, appeals to that last, if you like, you know. So, um, yeah, um, I think that one we mentioned before, the the 602 is, is essentially an E-width at the forefoot, but then it's quite narrow in the heel. So mm -hmm. that will suit certain people. Other ones that will be narrower uh, will suit a narrower foot, but it's not as always as simple as width or um 
because that toe box particularly um what happens there it's 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 basically volume because you know if you were to take the insole out of any shoe or boot and then stand on it you'll find that the edges of your foot almost inevitably will spill over the edges a bit right yeah, yeah. however when you put that insole in and then put the shoe or boot on you find well it fits and it's snug that handshake feel they speak of yeah. and that yeah. so it's um it's more about volume inside that that toe box yeah that's certainly for that that end of the boot and then with other areas you know the heel as i said there's variances where you can have a narrower heel and it tapers out to a wider forefoot or one is you know relatively wide all the way through that sort of thing you know yeah. usually generally in medical footwear and i know we're not really talking about medical footwear but the last is was bigger if you like because then that translates to a shoe that's ever so slightly deeper and ever so slightly wider so i suppose it it comes back to fit for the most people if you like and that may vary a country to country or something like that but then also um it will it will um be a function of what what you're going to do in the boot and this comes to back to what i was saying before about why we wear boots you know um i tend to i tend to like have a boot to walk in because when i've got a boot on i i feel a bit bulletproof quite frankly you know um whereas whereas when um you know the some of the guys in america speak about being on ladders all day yeah. you know then the boots doing a different thing ultimately we wear footwear for protection and support yeah. And then the third factor, which is a big factor, is fashion. Yeah, yeah. And mm. in terms of, I mean, I, I know what you're saying about bulletproof. In, mm. in terms of the the support around your ankles and and so on, that's that's an important part of bootery, isn't it? Oh, I think so. Yeah, I think it is. Um, and I think a lot of that, it's probably a feeling you get as well. Um, why people will choose to wear a boot, often even if it's relatively warm climate. Um because of that support however i'll point out that um people will say oh boot will give you more ankle support but if an ankle wants to sprain it will sprain okay and i know <laughs> i know pl plenty of people who've sprained their ankles wearing what would be considered quite supportive boots but what it is is it's the contact of um something uh different to um you know what what's hitting our skin so, so something's almost wrapping our foot up, almost like a handshake, as we say, and that that gives our brain feedback that everything's good down there. Yeah, yeah. And that, but that you spoke earlier about um, having that foot flexibility. So, is there some danger of having too much ankle support that you're you're in a moon boot almost? Well, yes, I think you'll find that that footwear that um requires uh some sort of activity or um or uh you know movement say hiking or 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 trekking or working um um then you need a certain degree of flexibility um the way moon boots work is that they take the total load off your ankle and and foot complex by providing a cam yeah. to walk on yeah, yeah. yeah. um yeah because i do have some uh, eight inch boots which I, I actually find quite uncomfortable because they, mm. they don't give me that flexibility when I, I, mm. I take them hiking because I'm thinking you know ankle mm. support you know good and mm. rough ground but I do find them uncomfortable like they, they mm. they're almost keeping me too stiff yes yes well that comes back to where <clears throat> I was saying before that you know in my view a heel on a boot is a good thing um because we pivot over our heel but then our ankle joint itself and this is where you know the ankle joint being where our leg joins our foot essentially we have to have that motion of being able the leg to pass over our foot yeah. so if a, a very rigid boot is going a fair way up your leg and it's laced fairly hard and and it's got rigid leather then it's going to limit that motion right right um i, I wouldn't mind talking about sizing because particularly for us in australia buying uh american boots it's a bit of a, a gamble when you're buying mm. uh, online mm. um so in terms of sizing 
we spoke about feeling snug um, and mm. wits and so on. What should you be looking for? Because I, I some people are, uh, you, you see in these forums, they're saying, oh, you know, uh, it's a little bit snug. I'm usually a D, but I've decided to go double E and it fits really well. And I, it mm. kind of worries me about this sort of potluck <laughs> size. Mm. What mm. should you be looking for? Well, it is, I agree, it is a bit potluck, particularly when you're um, buying them online. Um, and, um, uh, you know, my advice would always be to try it on in person before you, you know, commit your hard earned. Um, however, that's not always possible for whatever reasons. But, you know, I think, I think, you know, the best, I think it's been covered fairly well out there when people speak about that firm handshake and first step. And, and knowing that, you know, these good quality leathers will stretch up a bit, you know, they will um, open up a bit and your foot um, will will, will uh, feel a lot better than, say, the day you get them. Um, you know, um, keeping in mind that you should probably, if you are trying on boots, you should probably try them on in the afternoon when your foot is a little yeah. bit bigger. Yeah. So, yeah, but I mean, I think I think that has been covered fairly well in this firm handshake. If you're feeling pinching across your forefoot, that's not right. If it if it feels too tight, and even if it feels hard, well, you know, hardness being like a la relative lack of shock absorption when compared with, say, a jogger. Well, most cushioning, well, pretty much all cushioning, comes from what's outside a boot. Yeah. So yeah, the heel so, and the sole. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So if that's if that's a firm um, compound or or, or uh, you know a material, it's it's going to feel firm underfoot, and that's just the nature of it. And it's that's just it's a bit like tires. You know, you can have a soft, squishy tire that will yeah. ride beautifully and be really good in the wet, but it'll wear out quickly. Whereas you yeah. have a, a rugged old truck tire, it'll last you know fifteen years. So because it's harder, more dense rubber. So, yeah. but yeah, yeah, fit fit is it, it's tricky and it's very personal it's very personal yeah. Yeah. i know that the sporting footwear companies or the running shoe companies will actually design a shoe so it feels quite amazing in that first step right okay. yeah they, they actually refer to it as that first step comfort and right. often that will make a sale if someone's tossing up between two or three other bands whereas yeah. whereas um in the boot side of the house it's a different feel and um yeah i think i think you have to um i'd, I'd just say number one ideally try it on in person and then and then fit wise at last is a, is a thing. um and generally it seems that that you know if you use the brannock device and you know your brannock size then generally it's a half size lower yeah you know when as far as fit you know, using the u.s yeah. system yeah yeah don't get mm. me started in half size low i mean why can't they bloody name these things the exact same size that your brannock is <laughs> well this is it this is it i mean it, it's quite incredible because you can look online you know for any number of boot boot size conversion tables and then you can go to a website of a boot supplier and you might really like their boots and you look at their sizing and it actually doesn't add up with anybody's <laughs> um, system you think well where are we here so um thankfully a lot of them are very good in liaising with you um i'm currently in the, um uh, having a few email exchanges with the guys over in bourdon and yeah, and yeah. very supportive very supportive yeah, fantastic yeah, yeah yeah um we might wind up with some of your thoughts on uh, intervention because your mm. experience with australia's defense forces you must mm. you must have had guys come in with you know boots that you just can't find the right size for something's mm. not right what, what are the mm. types of interventions that you might be looking at well um if we refer specifically to the patients that were from the defense force they they had a they had a few restrictions on what they boots they're allowed to wear so that that made it hard for them that's for sure um i can't speak too much about what goes on in the army of course and and the forces but but you know there was uh, always a desire to um, have a um, a relatively inexpensive boot, which was supplied that would be uh, capable of fitting every foot type. Um, now, unfortunately, that's virtually impossible. Um, and so, 
and so sometimes it was a matter of just um, uh, getting approval or uh, or advising them of other models that they were allowed to wear um, and even the concept of sizing um, you know I wish I had a dollar for every time I've said to someone you know what size is your foot and they'll say oh 10 or 10 and a half and I said yeah but what's the rest and they go what do you mean and I said well are you a D are you an E or a yeah. 2E and so oh, sometimes it was simple as saying well you need a 2E in your joggers for a start or something like that um, and then yeah sure we we did various other things like um, as I said sometimes adding just a simple heel raise sometimes adding some padding in certain areas um, I, I'm not a huge fan of say stretching footwear or or um, but I have 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 had some experience that have been successful for some people in that regard. And then, um, yeah, using, you know, insoles or orthotics um, in, in there can certainly help a lot of people. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, keeping in mind that, you know, in my view, that's more of a clinical intervention rather than to aid fit, for example, yeah, or, right, right. Um, you know, uh, you know, I don't have an orthotic here, but some people might say, Oh well, let's just art support. Well, it's not just art support. I can tell you now. You know, um, they have various features designed. There's probably twelve to fifteen major parameters that we go through right. when we pre when we prescribe an orthotic. So, um, you know, that that is, in my view, it's 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 very customized. Um, and so there's the the risk of getting all of that combination and variables right, and then also being prepared to adjust it if needs be afterwards. You know, yeah. Yeah. so um, yeah, I had various materials, tools, grinders, little buffers, and things like that. And so it's, a, I suppose, an analogy might be like false teeth. You know, if it's not right, it's just going to annoy you. Yeah, and if course. it's if it's great, it'll work well. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. but yeah, um, you know, and and and, uh, and one of the main in interventions, as I mentioned before, was just just good footwear advice, like doing that. What I said, picking up the shoe bending yeah. it, twisting it, and coming from that engineering slash physics background. Yeah, I <laughs> I guess people like me who wander into a pharmacy and buy an insole and slip it in must <laughs> grate your teeth. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think there's, that, I'm sure they help a lot of people, really. <laughs> uh, it's very cheap, it's very immediate, um, and, and it, if it helps, well, that's great. Um, but it all, <laughs> all, all comes down to why you're doing it. Um, uh, I, I suppose I get a bit... Um, uh, annoyed when you have you see a, a, a what is a mass-produced uh, device being called custom. Um, yeah. Again, it's a it's a contradiction in terms. So yeah. that's all. But that's the pedant in me, as I said. Yeah. I, I think yeah. it's custom because you can cut it at the top to size. <laughs> that that's right. That's right. Yeah. So one feature. Yeah. 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 Terrific. So. Um, mm. Anthony, um, thanks very much for your time. Do you have any final thoughts for us? Um. No, no, not not really. I think uh, I think uh, it's it's been great to chat to you today, Tech, and I uh, hope some people get a little bit out of this. Um, you know, um, I think that generally the the whole genre or family of footwear that we're all enthused about, sort of on mass, is very good footwear, and that's great. And you know, we we enjoy the build quality, the choice of materials, and things like that. And um, I suppose I, I, I'm, I might just point out that, you know, it's interesting that here we are in Australia, um, you know, adding to cart for companies in America or, um, uh, you know, Bolivia, as I said before, and then yeah. having a, 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 a boot pair of boots turn up that's been made in Spain or Mexico and things like this. And I suppose it's a bit disappointing in terms of the local the local side of the house um really? just 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 personally i i haven't worn an rm williams boot for over 10 years now um uh, a little boot i held up before that one there that's i don't know if you know that's harold footwear oh yeah i do know them yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so um to me that's a little bit better made um yeah a little bit better priced for what you get um yeah. yeah harold it's a very small company and then yeah uh wooden wooden shoes oh, is yes. another one have you heard of them i have yeah i'm visiting mm. your store next month so that I'm looking forward mm. to that yeah yeah that'll be great um but i mean that again that's another tin of worms of why don't we manufacture more things yeah. in this country a bit good on the americans quite frankly yeah well we used to and and i think the americans also went through a, a phase where 
it was definitely a dying art, I think. And it's only yes. since I think the the um, late 2010s when it re, re rose again, because I think mm. small bootmakers like Parkhurst were seeing mm. it um, mm. and bringing it back. And then I think the Pacific Northwest mm. boots kind of rode the the crest of the wave, you know. Point. Um, yeah. So yeah. so I I don't know why. Well, like we've lost a lot of a we've lost a lot of boot brands in Australia, mm. and b those that survived have tended to go overseas. Yes, that's right. Yeah. But we we do make cochlear implants. <laughs> yes. And we invented most things that other people took advantage of. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So that's terrific, Anthony. Um that was very informative and thank you for reaching out. That was that was fantastic. Thanks for your time. You're most welcome, Tech. Yeah. Goodbye. Um so viewers, um I hope you enjoyed that. If you do, don't forget to click on like. And of course, if you're not subscribed, please do so. And I'll see you again soon.